Okay, let's take the next question that is 56. A vertical line passing through the point h comma 0 intersects the ellipse x square by 4 plus y square by 3 equals 1 at the points p and q. Let the tangents to the ellipse at p and q meet at the point r. If delta h is equal to area of the triangle pqr, delta 1 is the maximum of delta h and delta 2 is the minimum of delta h where h is lying in the interval half to 1. Then 8 by root 5 delta 1 minus 8 delta 2 is equal to. This is what we have to obtain. Correct. So, let us draw the ellipse first. A vertical line intersecting the ellipse at two points P and Q. Tangents are drawn at P and Q. This is the point H comma 0. This is x axis, y axis and origin. Correct. Now, the ellipse is given to me. I can assume the general points on the ellipse. Point P that is simply 2 cos theta. and root 3 sin theta similarly q 2 cos theta minus root 3 sin theta correct we have taken the general points on the ellipse as in form of parametric one that is a cos theta b sin theta we can write the equations of tangents at these two points x x 1 upon a square plus y y 1 upon b square equals one form fine now, when we write the tangent at P, this comes out as x cos theta by 2 plus y sin theta by root 3 is equal to 1. Similarly, the tangent at Q that is x cos theta by 2 minus y sin theta by root 3 is equal to 1. We can solve these two equations to get the point of intersection as r. Solving the two simply we know y is 0. When we add the two y is cancelled out and that gives me x cos theta is equal to 2. So, point r comes 2 by cos theta comma 0. When we have all three vertices we can find out the area of this triangle pqr that comes out as area of triangle p q r that is equal to simplifying we get 2 root 3 tan theta minus half sin 2 theta correct area of the triangle p q r when we differentiate this area we observe it comes 2 root 3 sec square theta minus cos 2 theta which is always positive if theta is considered non-zero. So, what we observe delta that is area of triangle is the strictly increasing function of theta. Strictly increasing function delta is increasing function of theta. Now, h is lying between half and one. When function is increasing, the first value will be giving me minimum, the last will be giving me the maximum h is between half and 1, h means this point means 2 cos theta. So, we have cos theta is lying between 1 by 4 and 1. When we substitute cos theta equals 1 by 4 here in area that will give me minimum that is delta 2. When I put cos theta is equal to 1 by 2 here, I will get the maximum value correct. So, maximum that is delta 1. So, we can find delta 1 on substituting cos theta as half in this area. Half on substituting we get delta 1 equals simply 45 root 5 upon 8. Similarly, on substituting cos theta as 1 by 4 we get delta 2 on simplification 9 by 2. My question was asking for the value of 8 by root 5 delta 1 minus 8 delta 2. So, it is simply 8 by root 5 delta 1. Delta 1 means 45 root 5 upon 8 
minus 8 into 9 by 2. We can clearly see 8 is cancelled. This is simply 45 minus 36 giving me answer as 9. So, correct answer for this first integer type question of code 8 is 9. Right, let us take the next one that is question number 57. Okay, let us talk about question number 57. The coefficients of 3 consecutive terms of 1 plus x to the power n plus 5 are in the ratio 5 is to 10 is to 14 then n is. This is quite simple one although a little lengthy 1 plus x to the power n plus 5 three consecutive terms these are in the ratio 5 is to 10 is to 14 for the sake of simplicity let us take n plus 5 as k so that the calculation part would be easier it appears like that so the question says k c r that is three consecutive terms i am talking about let us consider these three consecutive terms are r minus 1 at term r at term r plus 1 at term or you can say rth term r plus 1 th and r plus 2 th any 3 you can take let us consider I am taking rth r plus 1 th and r plus 2 th term. So, k c r minus 1 is to k c r is to k c r plus 1 is equal to 5 is to 10 is to 14. When I take first 2 I can write it direct k c r upon k c r minus 1 means k minus r plus 1 upon r is equal to 2 correct cross multiplying and simplifying we simply get the equation k minus 3 r is equal to minus 1 fine let us consider this be the equation number 1 next k c r plus 1 upon k c r is 14 by 10 that is k minus in place of r i can use r plus 1 so we get k minus r upon r plus 1 is equal to 7 by 5 or on simplification it is 5k cross multiplication minus 12r is equal to 7 simply solve the two equations to get the value of k on solving we get k equals 11 means n plus 5 is equal to 11 or n equals 6. So, in this manner we get the value of n as 6. So, the required answer is 6. Correct. Let us move to the next that is question number 58. Consider the set of 8 vectors v a i cap plus b j cap plus c k cap where a b c are either minus 1 or 1. Three non copilinear vectors can be chosen from V in 2 to the power P ways then P is. I have to first check out how many ways there are so that you can form three non copilinear vectors write it in the form of 2 to the power P and get the value of P fine. We can write 8 terms as 1 1 1 1 1 minus 1 and so on. correct these are the possible 8 ways because we have just 2 numbers minus 1 and 1 there will be in total 8 ways over there fine. Non coplanar vectors let us do one thing instead of forming non coplanar let us find out the coplanar vectors first. How many ways are there to choose the coplanar vectors? 3 coplanar vectors can be selected in 4 c 3 multiplied with 6 ways why it is so 4 c 3 when I fix 1 then x and y these are in a plane can vary in 2 into 2 4 ways out of those 4 3 can be selected in 4 c 3 ways if you consider a cuboid there are 6 faces so out of 6 there are ways in multiplication 4 c 3 into 6 that gives me 24 ways are there so that you can select three non coplanar vectors. Now, how many total number of ways are there? Out of eight, you can select three in. Therefore, 
the non-coplanar vectors can be selected in total ways as I said to out of 8 you have to select 3 that is 8 C 3 minus 24 correct. 8 C 3 that is 8 7 6 upon 6 that is 56, 56 minus 24 giving you 32 that is 2 raised to the power 5. Therefore, 2 to the power p equals 2 to the power 5 getting you p equals 5. So, the correct answer for this question is 5 correct. Let us move to the next that is question number 59. 